dear devotees thank you very much for inviting me once again to give another religious talk in conjunction with your annual mahasanghika dana that you have organized few years ago to raise fund for to support buddhist education and you have given me a topic that is human psychology and the buddhist concept in simple language human mind and the definition given in the teachings of the buddha human mind is an extraordinary intellectual force that we cannot find in any other living being in any other part of the universe that is why a person who wants to gain enlightenment must become a human being a deva or brahma never gain enlightenment because that intellectual capacity that we have in our mind we cannot find in others i have told you on many occasion we human beings are the only living beings who have a religion please remember this people believe that religion is given by the god commandments or religious laws are given by the god messages or divine messages given by the god but all these are belief devas have no particular religion brahmas have no particular religion when they were human beings during their previous birth they have cultivated developed trained their mind and then rebirth has taken place as devas and brahmas because of the merits of the development that they have created during the previous birth when they were human beings when you study all the existing religions in this world and compare with the teachings of the buddha you can understand the buddha did not pay much attention toward the external forces he concentrated more on human mind he says there is nothing for us to gain from outside but by developing our own human mind we can find everything there he says imasminche vyama matte khale bari lokanche lok samudayanche panya bemi saints of the buddha <coughs> he says the whole world the whole universe we can find 
within this small human body. You cannot find any extraordinary elements or energies outside which you cannot find in human life. But we do not know how to cultivate, develop, but potentials are there. That is why people say we have Buddha nature, Buddha seed. That means potentials are there, but we have to cultivate up to the maximum level, then we gain enlightenment. Human mind is the most dangerous energy in this universe. Atomic energies or any other forms of energies are not that bad. When we misuse human mind, we can destroy the whole world by using that mental energy. Now this is the danger of human mind. At the same time, when we cultivate, develop our human mind, we can reach the highest stage to find out the purpose of our life, aim of our life or the meaning of our life. In other words, human life is the center in between heaven and hell, but not other living beings. That means when we abuse our human life, we experience miserable, unfortunate life which creates enormous suffering, that is hell. When we use this life in proper manner, by maintaining human dignity and by giving due credit to human intelligence, ah, then we experience the heavenly bliss. That means the highest development in worldly sense. It is not nirvana. So the human life is the center. So we cannot take any other living beings in this way. Our human life is so important, but this mind is deluded, clouded, misled, blindfolded by so many concepts, belief, imagination, traditions, so the mind has lost the identity. So the Buddha wanted to cleanse this mind from all those rubbish that we have accumulated life after life. due to our ignorance, imagination, craving, 
and various other forces. To pave the way for human beings to find out the purpose of their life. What is the purpose of life? The purpose of life is to see the end of our physical and mental suffering. There is no any other purpose. Every minute, every day, we are working day and night to get rid of our suffering. But we cannot see the end of suffering. So the purpose of life is to stop all these unsatisfactoriness, disappointment, miseries, sufferings, calamities. Every minute, every second we are facing these problems. Nobody is happy. Everybody is grumbling, accusing, blaming, fighting, quarreling. Then where is the happiness? Where is the purpose? It is due to our ignorance. So the other religions advise us to divert our mind towards external forces. Praying, worshipping, offering, chanting, blessing, to influence external forces to gain something. The Buddha did not accept that method. He never advised us to go and worship anybody, pray to anybody, perform rites and rituals and ceremonies in the name of religions. In fact, he did not ask anybody to come and worship him. But we like to worship him because of this kind of sayings. That means he has given due credit to our human intelligence. He did not regard us as slaves. He did not regard us as sinners. He knew we were misled by our own ignorance. Therefore, his duty was to pave the way, to remove the darkness of ignorance for people to understand the meaning of life. So the human mind is the main important energy in this universe. Again, he says, he has never seen any other energy that which runs so fastly, so rapidly, other than human mind. He says, lightning, when you look at, you have no time to see, appear and disappear, lightning. But human mind runs thousands times faster than lightning. This is the nature of human mind. 
this human mind can radiate, transmit to any part of the universe when it is developed. But unfortunately, we have not realized the human values. We are dealing with this dirty, ugly, filthy, impermanent, physical body as our life. What a big mistake. This is not life. This is the house. Life is an energy related to mental energy. Continuity of our life maintained because of this. Not the element here only element. These element disintegrate, dissolve or separate after our death. Nothing to remain, nothing to carry with us. But the mental energy, polluted mental energy and purified mental energy, uh, these two mental energies, in religious language, we say wholesome and unwholesome. Polluted mental energy and purified mental energy. Guided by the life process. All our energies. Simply we say mind, but we do not know what it is and where it is. For thousands of years, people believe that mind is in our heart. That is why they have created some words like kind-hearted, cruel-hearted. They thought kindness and cruelties are in the heart. Well, modern heart transplantation <laughs> clearly shows that belief is a very childish idea. The mind is in our heart. When I was in Australia, after my heart operation, I met Australian lady who had this heart transplantation. She was about 70 years old, but she got a heart of a young man of 35 years old. Then I asked, how do you feel now? Formerly you had a woman's heart. Now you are having a man's heart. When you look at a woman or a man, how do you feel now? <laughs> you see, no difference, same. Uh, this clearly shows we had so many imaginations due to lack of understanding. So mind is not located in our heart. Right. Later, they discovered medical science. Mind is in our brain because they have seen so many indications. When they open this, they can see how these things are working in the brain. So they thought the mind is in our brain. 
and this belief also given up by the scientist, psychologist and great thinkers. Mind is not in our brain. Of course when we talk, when you cannot remember something, you say, you know, this mind, you know, cannot remember because this traditional belief we maintain for thousands of years, we think the mind is here. Now the problem is, then where is the mind? Intellectual people say, when they ask, where is the mind? They say, never mind. <laughs> uh, that is the correct answer. After that, there won't be any controversy. Even then, we can give example. Without heart, without brain, we cannot see the mind. Heart and brain both are responsible for our mind. It is like this. Generator and dynamo. So when you start this generator, which is connected to the dynamo, the friction produces electricity. Electricity is not located in that generator or in that dynamo or anywhere in this world. Uh, because of this friction, electricity in the same manner, when the brain and the heart work together, frictions of brain and heart produce this mental energy just like electricity. Otherwise, mind is not located in any part of the body. When we refer to the Buddha, again, he says, Duram gamam eka charam asariram guhasayam Three, four characteristics of our mind. runs very fast. I told you just now there is no any other kind of energy that which can run so fast than human mind. Runs very fast. Eka chara. Live alone. Two minds cannot live together. Remember this. Because today in this world I heard more than 5,000 millions human beings. But you cannot find two human beings who think equally. Never. And this is the main reason why always Clashes, calamity, misunderstanding, enmity take place. Husband and wife, they have entirely different mentality. Cannot make into one mental attitude. Impossible. So the duty of a husband is to understand the nature or the mentality of his wife. And the duty of the wife is to understand the mentality of her husband. Uh, this understanding, compromise, unite, work together without arguing, fighting, quarreling. But many people do not know how to do that. So entirely different. Ekat kaya 
Nanatta Sanya. I again the teachings of the Buddha. Body, physical body look like the same, human body. But the mind, nanatta, different. Two minds never get together, never work together. You must understand this. Then you can avoid a lot of misunderstanding. My way of thinking is not your way of thinking entirely different. And your way of thinking is not like my way of thinking. Then, <coughs> the mind always live alone. Two minds cannot live together. Asari Ram, there is no form, that means invisible. Just like other religions, when they talk about soul, they say soul has no forms, no color, exactly the same thing. It is a different interpretation of human consciousness in other religion, soul. And no color, no formation, It is an energy. Atom is an energy. Those who have discovered atom also have never seen what it is because no one can see it. So the human mind also exactly like this. Don't try to see the mind. Guha Sayam, dwelling in this physical body. He did not say whether it is in the heart or the brain. This physical body support mental energy and life process to accommodate So when this body decay and collapse and dissolve, and then the mental energy life process combine together, proceed. You cannot see. Enter into another. Vinyanam matukuchismin okkamati, the Buddha say. Vinyana, that consciousness, that departed consciousness. In that departed consciousness, there are many ingredients, not only mental energy. All are mental energies, but divided into different categories. What are those mental energies? When we depart from this body, when our life depart from this body, five energies combine together. All are mental energies. Avidya, Trishna, Karma, Upadana, Bhav. These five things. All combined together. Please remember, Buddhism is not a religion for you to just come and believe. You have to study. You have to use your your common sense and understanding to appreciate. So, because this is not a message came down from heaven. This is the result of 
the experiment done by a brave man life after life such a long period in searching and searching and seeking and studying and practicing so the outcome of this investigation is Buddhism or the enlightened he did not say that suddenly a God appeared and given him this message no his own effort so in our case also we cannot gain anything from the Buddha from the God from the Devas or any external forces we had to work for that when I was in Australia I was invited to give a public talk there were many non-Buddhists after my talk Australian lady ask this question what is the Buddha's attitude towards God then I told her the Buddha has never said that there is no God he never uttered such a his advice is whether the God exists or not it is your duty to do your work for your salvation without depending on others examples when you go out at nine don't forget to lock the door there is no guarantee the God will protect your house until you come back you pray to God you worship God ask him protection and everything even then don't forget to lock the door when you go out ah, that is Buddhism whether God exists or not we don't know to say there is no God whether God exists or not we had to do our duty, our work, for our salvation. That is Buddhism. So that lady say, I accept it. No argument. Because they can understand, there's a common sense. So, these five mental energies as consciousness, avidya, our ignorance ignorance means the lens of the mind is covered by dust wrong ideas wrong belief wrong concept uh, that is ignorance so when you clean this uh, then you can see clear vision and no more ignorance Trishna we have three kinds of craving in our mind they are mental energies we have very strong craving for sensual pleasure enjoyment Uh, this is the nature of karma loka this world is called karma loka the whole universe divided into three karma loka rupa loka arupa loka animals humans and devas belong to karma loka sensual world where they want to indulge five senses, five senses, pleasure. 
uh, then the troubles, violence, bloodshed, calamities, war, all these problems take place because of this. Because in other part of the world there are no such calamities. So all our troubles and problems are based on this, our craving for pleasure. Bhava Tanha, our strong craving for survival and existence and eternal life hereafter. This is another strong craving. Eternal life hereafter is only an imagination. But for survival, for our living, we are willing to destroy even millions of other living beings for our living. See how strong it is. Not only animals, even human beings also, we are willing to destroy for our living. See how strong our craving. There is another one, craving for non-existence. Some people cannot understand this. Non-existent means a skeptical belief that they maintain this is the only life, hereafter there is nothing, I don't believe. Uh, this is called craving for non-existent. I don't like to have another life hereafter. Simply by thinking in that way we cannot stop. Another aspect. Certain things which we like so much, we like to destroy them, burns them without allowing others to endure. See how cruel we are. We cannot tolerate when others use our belonging. So we are willing to burn and destroy them. That is also under that craving for non-existence. So we have these three kinds of strong craving in our mind. All our troubles and worries and fear and disturbances take place because of one of these things. Karma. Bad karma and good karma. No one can live even for one minute without creating either a good karma or bad karma. Uh, this is the nature of our life. Even the most wicked and cruel, dangerous man also creates some good karmas. And very religious people also create some bad karma. Uh, this is the nature of our life. Sukhumalasya padmasya nalo bhavati karkas. Our life is like this. A lotus flower. So beautiful. Lovely. Everybody like it. But the straw is thorny, very rough when you touch. Human life is like that. 
in every good man there are some bad habits. In every bad man there are some good habits. Just like that lotus flower. So this situation remains as long as we remain as worldly people. So we create, by thinking we create good karma and bad karma. By talking we create good karma and bad karma. By doing something we create good karma and bad karma. So three channels. But simply by thinking we cannot create karma. The Buddha clarify this. Chetanaham bhikkhave kammam vadami. Chetana. Volitional thought which you created with intention and then create either good karma or bad karma. Example, you think that you want to kill a person. Just think. But that thinking alone cannot create bad karma. This thinking remain as thoughts, converts into thoughts. Now these thoughts are like waves. These thoughts create so many other evil ideas also. After that, the thoughts that we have created in our mind, we transmit, radiate, throughout the body, whole body. Then the dynamic force we have created to do that. And that dynamic force create the karma. But not simply thinking I want to kill. Only impurities of the mind take place. Good karma also like this. Chetana, the word used by the Buddha. Chetana. First we think, after thinking we convert into thought, then the thought influence vibration. Some people, we can notice them, when that thought <coughs> influences the mind, the body, sure. Change the face, color of the face. Ah, that energy. So karma, <coughs> good and bad karma, remains in the mind. Only the Buddhas and Arahantas never create good karma or bad karma. The reason is, <coughs> they have no craving. Without craving, we cannot create either good karma or bad karma. Now you want to give dana. You want to support others, help others as meritorious deeds. By giving, by offering, by supporting others, you expect something in return to go to heaven and enjoy your life, to be born in a rich family, that is craving. That is why I told you, without craving we cannot create good karma also. <coughs> karma divided into two, laukika and lokhotra. Worldly karma, 
and supramundane. Uh, supramundane karma cannot create craving. You want to be kind. You want to extend your compassion toward others. You want to be honest. You want to practice patience and tolerance and harmony. Uh, these karmic thoughts are higher than worldly. Uh, there you cannot find craving. So when we develop our mind up to the higher stage, we do good things with such thoughts, virtuous thought. Then the Buddhas and Arhantas have ended their journey. No more rebirth for them, stop already. They got fed up with this cycle of birth and death and birth and death and birth and death. They real nuisance. They have stopped by realizing. So they need not have any karma for them. They have ended their journey. For us, uh, still we need karma, especially good karma. Why? We know very well. We had to go further and further and further a long distance. We know our own weaknesses. We know how jealous we are, how greedy we are, how stupid we are. We know. Ah, then, how can you stop this journey by keeping all these rubbish? Ah, then we need good karma. For what? For our expenses. Wherever rebirth takes place, we need good food, clothing, uh, shelter, medicines, or to gain some happiness. Uh, if, if we have not accumulated enough karma for that in for the next life, we get into trouble. Another advantage of human mind is this. Only human beings can prepare for their next life. Others have no such idea. Even Devas and Brahmas have no such idea. This human mind we can use to understand. Patirupa desa vasocha pubbecha kata punyata Mangala Sutra. Beautiful sayings of the Buddha. If existence takes place as rebirth in a certain area, certain locality, certain countries where there are no troubles and problems and war and volcanic eruptions and flood and fire and all those things, the Buddha says we are blessed. You compare with others in many parts of the world. Millions of human beings dying, suffering. No food, no clothing, no water. Volcanic eruption, war, refugees. So how fortunate we are. That means we have prepared for that. To be born in certain countries, certain areas where we can lead some sort of life that we can experience satisfaction. 
Pubbech Katha Punyata. Those who have done some meritorious deeds during their previous birth are blessed people because they gain their requisite without any difficulty. That you can understand in many countries how millions of human beings are dying without food, not even a piece of cloth, no shelter, millions of them for generations at the roadside, pavement, but they are also human beings. Why they were born in certain countries, certain areas where they lead a very miserable life? Because they have not done enough good karma. After all, what is good karma? We have to define this. We create good karma by supporting others, helping others, and we can release their suffering. Uh, in that way we create good karma, not with selfish ideas. Uh, then we are fortunate. You can compare your life with others in many parts of the world. You cannot deny that you are fortunate. Then, karma is very important for our worldly life <coughs> until we attain our final salvation. After that, karma is not important. Next one, upadana. <coughs> we develop some sort of attachment, inclination towards certain things while we are living. Uh, this is another kind of mental energy. This attachment that we have developed, accumulated attachment throughout our life, combined with the other ingredients. Uh, then, bhava. Karma Bhava, the formation of the next line. We prepare for that. It is not that somebody else come from heaven or somewhere else and carry and send us this way or that way. Our own karmic energy, mental energy, create, condition, our fate, our destiny, our next life. Either to become miserable or pleasurable. The simple sayings of the Buddha, I remember I have repeated this on many occasions. I don't know how many of you can remember this. We are the result of what we were. We will be the result of what we are. Very simple. If our life is miserable here, unfortunate, who is responsible for that? We are responsible. The way how we have use this life during our previous birth. Uh, when rebirth takes place, uh, we experience either pleasurable or miserable life. So others are not responsible for that. We will be the result of what we are after our death existence again take place, whether we believe or not. Belief is not important because it is natural. Existence again take place. 
and that existence take place according to our way of life here. How we think, how we talk, how we perform our work or duties, what sort of meritorious deeds we have done, what sort of bad karmas that we have done. So all these activities are going on accumulating, accumulating, accumulating throughout our life. After our death, all these five energies mold the next life. So outsiders have nothing to do with this. So I am solely responsible for my next life. I am also experiencing good and bad result for the deeds that I have done during my previous birth. The Buddha's way of teaching is very simple. He never introduced Buddhism as a religious law or religious commandment. If not by creating some sort of temptation in others' mind, by following this religion you can go to heaven and enjoy your life. Not by threatening and frightening people, saying, if you don't follow this religion, you go to hell. That is not the Buddha's way of preaching. That is why the whole world respect this great religious teacher, although they are not Buddhist. Such, such liberal and rational meaningful religious way of life. He says, I advise you, let us take one. I advise you not to kill other living beings. I am telling you not as a law, according to my own experience. During so many previous births, I have committed certain bad deeds. I can remember how I had to suffer for the bad deeds that I have committed. Therefore, I also advise you to keep away from this if you don't like to suffer. If you don't like to suffer, not as a law. Attanang upamang katwa nahane nagate. Then he has given a parable. When another person come and try to kill you, how do you feel? Very nice. Fear, worries, tension, hatred. Sufferings, you create by killing another person. So when another person come and try to kill you, you also experience the same thing. This is more than enough for you to understand why it is bad. Is it necessary for you to get a law or message from heaven to understand that killing is bad. Your own experience is more than enough to understand that it is bad. Now, this is his way of teaching. He said, my own experience, not as a theory or philosophy or traditions, Oh, message, practical, 
experience. But all these things are related to our human mind. That is why we must know how to guard, how to protect, how to cultivate, how to purify this mind. We can control so many other external things, but we cannot control our own mind because of our weaknesses. So the religion is important for us to to train this mind for us to find out the aim of our life. Otherwise, forever we had to suffer grumbling and worrying and sufferings and crying. Where is the end of it? In the end, what do we gain? Nothing. So this human mind can understand, but others cannot. So we can prepare for the next life. Other living beings cannot do that. Another thing. In our human mind, we have extraordinary emotion, human emotion. This human emotions also you cannot find in many other living beings. They have some sort of instinct for their survival. That's all. But we have emotion. This emotion is very important. Laughing, joking, amusement, entertainment, all these things contribute to maintain that human emotion. If you do not entertain this human emotion, what will happen? Either you go mad or you become very violent or aggressive, a skeptic, because you do not know how to handle your emotion. You cry and you laugh. That is the expression of emotion. You get angry. That is the expression of emotion. Sometimes we can control this emotion. Flare up. When emotion is overflowing, at that time we lose sense of reasoning. We have sense of reasoning. That means we know how to justify. We know that this is right, this is wrong, this is meaningful, this is meaningless. But through this emotion, we lose this sense of reason. The Buddha has given an advice how to control this emotion. He said, some people may come and scold, accuse, blame the Buddha, 
Sangha and the teachings. If you show your emotion after listening to those people, you harm yourself. Don't show your anger or don't show your emotion to those who come and criticize or blame. You must have this understanding. What is that? These people are ignorant. These people do not know how to appreciate things. So these people cannot understand things properly. Either they are jealous or narrow-minded. That is why they talk like this. Ah, then you can control your emotion, your anger. On the other hand, he says, another group may come and praise. The Buddha is a wonderful creature. I like him very much. And his teaching is wonderful and his disciples are remarkable. Ah, then, after listening to them, you should not show your emotion to them also. You have to think that emotionally upset. They go on praising, 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 praising. Even without proper understanding. Uh, then you can control your emotion. So human emotion must be handled very carefully. Our culture, our custom, our traditional practices, we have maintained by our human emotion. Now we beautify, decorate, certain things. Even a cup, now you see, this one we beautify. This is only a cup. Now this is to entertain our emotion. Everything in this world we beautify to entertain our emotion. Our culture we have developed in this way. So religion and this culture are interrelated. So emotion we have to entertain without arousing animal nature in human being. Ah, that is the mistake. Certain entertainment, certain amusement, certain programs that they introduce to entertain others arouse animal nature, not human nature, not humane qualities, not human dignity, worse than animals. Ah, if we entertain our emotion in this way, uh, then cannot control. The whole world, we are having this problem. We entertain our emotion in wrong way. But few hundreds or few thousand years ago, we had a respectable culture where Parents and children and brothers and sisters can enjoy together without creating any embarrassing attitude. But today, can you enjoy, experience a program without creating such unfortunate situation? Because they have polluted, sometimes very vulgar, way of entertainment. And that human emotion is aroused and misused. 
That is why in many parts of the world suddenly they get a machine gun or a pistol go on shooting. It is a habit. It is a hobby. They enjoy that. From their childhood they were this is the way how they entertain their human neighbors. Unfortunately in Asian countries we maintain this culture for a long time now, already gone, lost. All are becoming mad. No culture, no civilization, no human dignity, behaving worse than animals. Animals never behave like this. They are very respectable. They never kill unnecessary living beings, animals. But human beings are going on killing and killing and killing, destroying every living being on this earth or in the water. Therefore, how can we say we are cultured? Because that wonderful human intelligence, human mind is misled, polluted. So we had to come back to religion to train this mind to live as real human beings. And then we can live peacefully and we allow others also to live peacefully. We can find out our salvation by cooperating, harmonizing with other living beings without disturbing them then the whole world becomes a very peaceful place where human beings can live. Thank you very much, Lydia.